in your life and family today. And the angel said to Mary, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, let the glory of your spirit rest upon this service and let the power of the highest overshadow every worshiper today, thereby destroying every invisible barrier, every form of limitation, every finger of the enemy. Lift up your voice and begin to pray in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, Lika Praga Zatala, this service shall answer according to his name. Ilaka Praga Zatala, the power of the highest will overshadow this every believer, every worshiper today. In the name of Jesus, nobody will leave you back home with any mark of the devil. In the name of Jesus, Father, we say thank you. Are you praying? Lift up your voice, lift up your hands to him and appreciate him. Father, we are grateful. We are thankful unto you because this service is for me. It's for my breakthrough. Every mark of the devil is being erased in the course of this service by the power of your word. Thank you in Jesus' precious name. Shout aloud, amen. Somebody here, you have testimony to share in the course of this service. Why don't you make your way to the basement, get it documented. In the course of the service, you may be given the privilege to share it. Now, please put your hands together as we welcome the choir. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Oh, 
excited and you're expectant in this service, special communion and breaking invisible barrier service. Come on, give the Lord a shout. Put your hands together for the Lord. And please, you may be seated. Praise the Lord and more than a conqueror. We will be calling ourselves to worship from Psalm chapter 3. We'll be reading in alternate verses from verse 1 to 8. Psalm chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. Arise, O Lord. Save me, O oh my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Shall we take verse 8 together? One, two, go. Thy blessing is upon thy people. You are blessed. Put your hands together for the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. In this service, it's announcement time. Praise the Lord. You are welcome to this special communion service. From today, every barrier on your path to progress shall be destroyed in Jesus' name. Number two, we are all enjoying to seek the face of the Lord early at the altar of the covenant hour prayers, Mondays to Saturday at Goshen or any of our other prayer centers with addresses as displayed on the screen. The time again is 5.30 a.m. daily. Number three, praise the Lord. N next Saturday is our district soul winning outreach. All members are managed to participate at their various district location. The time again is 7 a.m. Number four, good news. In furtherance to the 2022 church expansion mandate in the foreign field to minimum additional 75 nations, to the glory of God, 23 new churches have been planted in three new nations. Consequently, members who have contact of such nation where the ministry is yet to start should visit the portal as displayed on the screen to fill out the forms. Praise God. Number five, to the glory of God, 680 applicants are presently being considered for pastoral placement nationwide. Praise God. Meanwhile, vacancy still exists in this commission for more missionaries to serve as pastors in charge across our rural field in Nigeria. Note that pastoral service in the rural churches does not require a university degree or its equivalent. However, applicant must be able to speak one Nigerian language so as to address the need of the rural dwellers. Interested candidates are required to visit the site as displayed on the screen to fill out the application form or obtain the form from the church office. Number six, next Wednesday shall be Next Wednesday, we shall be waiting on the Lord and gathered, and gathered in the evening. Praise the Lord. Next Wednesday, we shall be waiting on the Lord in the fast and gathered in the evening service to make supplication and partake of the coming on. The time is 6 p.m. Number seven, all members are admonished to locate the nearest cell to their homes and go with their new converts and other invitees to fellowship with the other brethren next Saturday. The time is 5 p.m. Number eight, another good news. Celebrate Jesus. Next Sunday is our special anointing service. It shall also be a covenant day of marital breakthrough during which God shall be establishing the marital destiny of every worshiper 
every eligible single shall be divinely connected to their spouse. Troubled homes shall experience peace. Broken home shall be restored. And every widow or widower shall experience their desired new beginning in Jesus' name. Therefore, come expectant with your bottle of anointing oil. Also, being our operation, Andrew Sunday, members to come with at least one new soul and other invitees. The time for the first service is 6.30 a.m. And the second service is 8.30 a.m. And the third service is 10.30 a.m. Number nine. All who are yet to be baptized by immersion admonish to gather at the baptistry immediately after this service. Change of clothes shall be provided. Number 10. The World of Faith Bible Institute will be for the month of March. Kicks off from Monday tomorrow, the 14th to Friday 25th of this same month. The basic certificate called BCC only shall be taught at Goshen, Massacre, Maraba, New Caro, and Sokoro Centers. Those yet to attend are to pick the Roman form from Wobi office at the U Chapel. All new members shall attend tuition free. Number 11. Visit the Dominion Bookshop to purchase the recommended book for the month and other teaching titles that will deliver you the keys to divine wisdom. You are blessed. One more time, put those hands for Jesus. This morning it is testimony time. Let the following quickly come out to share their testimony. Agbo Joy, Agbo Joy, Moses Patrick, Moses Patrick Uju Akuwafo, Uju Akuwafo, and Oche Samuel, Oche Samuel. If you clap unto the Lord, they will walk faster to the altar. And as they come, let's listen to this documented testimony. Miracle job after prophetic declarations. I lost my job in the month of March, and I have been believing God for another one. During my waiting period, I was given a big land to cultivate. So I till the land while believing God that in July 1st, it will give me a new job. During the breaking invisible barrier service, the bishop declared that we should go and return with our testimonies. So I key into it. On the 28th of June, I was called for interview, and on the 1st of July, I commenced my work. I have returned to give all glory to God. And the testifier is Francis Lemon. You are the next to share your own testimony. Your name and what the Lord has done for you. Quick. My name is Joy Agbo, and I'm privileged to serve in the sanctuary unit. I've come to return all the glory to the God of this commission who gave me a miracle job via kingdom service in the same company where I was rejected two years ago. On Saturday, I came for sanctuary, leaving my both phones at home. So on getting home, I realized that I have missed a job interview that was scheduled for 10 because I left the church by 12. So when I looked at the message, I said to myself that while I was here in the church, I know that my God must have represented me there. So I was going to that office to pick my job on Monday. And on Monday, I went to that office. To the glory of God, God used the HR who stood in for me, who explained to the director why I couldn't make it. Five candidates were selected on Saturday for the Sunday for the final phase of the interview. But the lady who missed the interview on Saturday emerged the best candidates. And I've come to return all the glory to the God of this community. This can only be God. Your name and what the Lord has done. My name is Moses Patrick. I start, I started to come to this church in 98. So I thank God for the life of, the, of my family. And I have... I, I... I to say thank you to Jesus for what he has done in my family. Uh, three years ago, I noticed a growth in the throat of my daughter. I googled it uh, from Google. It was uh, supposed to happen to people from 40, but the girl is just 20. I was like, God, what will I do? So I just pushed it aside. During Shiloh, I told her to camp here while I pray. 
I continued to believe God. I went on uh, evangelism with a group with Pastor Obo. We continued. I was just believing God for supernatural uh, breakthroughs and healing upon her. So last week she called me and said that in her dream that a man on white came and operated on her. As she woke up, she was coughing and coughing out something like muko. Now the whole thing has gone down. May God's name be glory. Serving God pays. Your name and what the Lord has done. So, my name is Oche Samuel. I came to this commission last month on the 13th, 13th of February. I ran out of my village with no direction. My enemy came to eat up my flesh, but they stumbled and they fell. I was not among the people that went to commit suicide, but my community just wanted to kill me because of my father's property. So they sent some group of soldiers and vigilantes to come and kill me. But when they came, I was sleeping and they couldn't find me. So I ran out from the compound with no direction. And I came to Abuja. So I was asked not to return home for a good four years. When I came to Abuja, I came with nothing. But by the special grace of God, I have a family now. And uh, so I, immediately I came last month, I went to join Wobi. And ever since I stepped out of my BBC, it has already given me the spiritual strength and the intellectual quality. So I thank God. Praise the Lord. He received purpose and direction after attending Wobi. Let's listen to this last documented testimony delivered from Adisha. In 2012, I started smoking and drinking. And in the process, I got addicted to it. So it became a problem. Even if I don't want to do it, I find myself doing it. And I've lost so many things because of it. I started attending this church on the 21st of February when I gave my life to Christ. I got baptized. Ever since, I don't know the taste of alcohol. I return all the glory to God. And the testifier is Celestin Favor. Who is the doer of all this? God is the doer. Give him a loud shout of thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, I'm more than a conqueror. Next, we shall be rising to our feet to pray, and when we rise, we shall pray in this manner, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, endue me with unusual passion for souls, thereby bringing many into the kingdom, and this church in this operation, Andrew Week. Shout aloud, Amen. Psalm 69 and verse 9, he says, For the zeal of thy house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. You are set to pray for yourself, for zeal to come upon you this week. Rise to your feet as you lift up your voice to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and show you are praying. Ask God to baptize you with fresh zeal, unusual passion fresh drive for souls thereby bringing many into the kingdom and to this church in this operation andrew week lift up your voice ensure you are praying for yourself Lift up your voice, everyone. Lift up your hands. Receive unusual passion, fresh drive, zeal for God to bring many into the kingdom and to this church in this Operation Andrew Week. Father, we thank you. We return all the glory to you for fresh release of zeal upon every one of us. To you alone be the glory forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Put your hands together for the Lord and please have your seats. Praise the Lord, I'm more than a conqueror. In a moment, we shall be rising to pray, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, we release angels to war against the camps of all enemies of this nation to chase, to persecute, and destroy them speedily. Psalms chapter 35, verse 5 and 6, Let them be as chaff before the wind. Let the angel of the Lord chase them. Rise on your feet. Lift your voice, pray with passion, pray with intensity this morning. Lift your voice and pray with the violence of faith this morning. Pray with all intensity. You can pray now in the Holy Ghost that the angels of the Lord will war against the camp of all enemies of this nation. The angels begin to chase them. Let the angels begin to persecute them. Let the angels destroy them speedily. Let their ways be dark and slippery. Lift your voice. Pray intensely in the Holy Ghost. Let the angels of the Lord persecute them. Let their ways become dark and slippery. Let the hand of the Lord come against them. Lift your voice and begin to thank him this morning. Father, we thank you. Wave your hands to him. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Give Jesus a big hand and please be seated. You show your clapping for Jesus. Clap some more for him. Hallelujah. This morning, we are so delighted to have those of you who worship with us here in Living Faith Church Goshen for the very first time. Please, in honor of Jesus, kindly stand to your feet wherever you're seated. Church, you're clapping for Jesus. Clap some more for him. Please, kindly stand to your feet if you're worshiping with us for the very first time here in Goshen. And also for those of you who worship with us online from anywhere in the world, you're also specially recognized and welcome to church. This morning, you are also welcome. On behalf of Jesus, the head of the church, and the leadership of this great assembly here in Goshen, you are welcome. This is Living Faith Church Goshen, the home of signs and wonders. In this special communion service, I'm breaking invisible barriers service, you are welcome. Every troubler of your life and destiny, visible or invisible, by the power in the world this morning, and the power in the communion shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. And also, as you remain planted here in Goshen, your life will never remain the same. I believe our church officials have given to you a package. Please, when you get home, go through this package. We have a life transform material designed to be a blessing to you. Take our time to study them. And as soon as you sit down, we also have a first summer data sleep inside the package kindly fill in all the details required just as shown on the screen and also on that first time data sleep we have a, a column for prayer requests at the, at the base of that sleep 
write down your heart desires. And I'm glad to let you know, God servant the bishop and the, and the team of pastors will pray on these items in the course of the week. And when, whenever that is done, just the way you heard first Samuel sharing their testimonies this morning, you shall be next to share your own testimony in the precious name of Jesus. And also for those of you who watch with us online, we have two links. On, you have two links on your screen. The first link is for you to download those live transforming materials that will be, be a blessing to you. And the second link is for you to fill in the first time I data sleep. Uh, all that is required of you to, to, to do, please kindly fill. There's also a column for prayer requests. Please write down your prayer requests. And I'm also glad to let you know God is not limited by time, space, or location. Wherever you are in the world, God will touch you this moment, and you will share your own testimony in the name of Jesus. Here, when we pray, God here and answers us speedily. Please bow down your head and talk to God as an entire church. Please stretch for your, your hands towards them in agreement with whatsoever they came to church with as a heart desire. Father, this morning we have returned to say thank you. What a privilege, what a joy to have our brothers and our sisters in your presence this morning. Oh God, according to your word this morning, every trouble of their life and destiny, bear this service, oh God. Lord, let, let these troublers be destroyed and terminated in their life in the name of Jesus. Give them encounter of a lifetime that will cause them to count all the days of their life. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Please, when you're done filling the form, kindly pass the first summer data slip to the official standing next to you. Once again, you're welcome to church. Kindly get seated and enjoy the service. Church, put your hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord, I'm more than a conqueror. At this juncture, it is offering time. Please, I'd like you to package your offerings your tithe, whatever you've brought to honor Jesus with this morning, and uh, clearly label the envelopes. If it's transport seed, put it as transport seed. If you are issuing a check, please issue the check in favor of Living Faith Church Goshen. And if you, are, if you want to transfer your offerings by electronic means, the account details are scrolling on the screen right now. Take advantage of them to effect your offerings. Now while you are doing that, be reminded of that which Paul said by the Holy Ghost in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6 to verse 8. He said, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly and he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man as a purpose in his heart, so let him give. But look at what he said in verse 8. And God is able to make all grace, the Amplified Bible says, all earthly favor and blessing to abound towards you and I, so that we can always have all sufficiency in all things. As you are sowing your seed today, all earthly favor and blessing shall abound towards you in the name of Jesus Christ. Emptiness shall be terminated in your life by the release of divine grace and favor upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up to your feet right now and lift up your seed above your heads and go ahead and worship Jesus with your offerings. Go ahead and lift up your voice and worship Jesus. Give him thanks. Give him a praise. Appreciate him. Glorify him. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory and praise. Thank you for this privilege to sow. For every giver here, I decree that these hands shall continually be giving hands in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree that favor and blessing locate you and your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever follows you as a, as a concern follows you back home as a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be for you in the precious name of Jesus. Please be comfortably seated. Cast your offering with joy and gladness as we welcome the choir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody set for the top. Let me see your hand. Say, I'm set for the top. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. Top. Nothing can stop. 
can stop me. Say it the best to yourself, nothing can stop me. I'm going to the top. No barrier can stop me. No Satan can stop me. My destiny shall be fulfilled. Nothing can stop me. Give him a shout. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please be comfortably seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am more than a conqueror. It's my privilege this morning by God and his servant to bring God's word in this second service for which I am grateful. Hallelujah. Our prophetic theme for the month is... I am redeemed for the topmost top. I thought somebody who believe it is saying it. And in our Sunday services, we have been examining the subject titled Exploring Success Virtues in Kingdom Stewardship. Exploring Success Virtues in Kingdom Stewardship. We have started part two, which began from the first service. Now I'm privileged to be taking part 2B, exploring success virtues in kingdom stewardship, part 2B. The teaching in the first service was very explosive. I'd like to encourage you to get that teaching CD. It will be a great blessing unto you in the name of Jesus. Those who knows the access to any good thing in life, they don't struggle. And God has not called us to a life of struggle, not a life of sweat, but a life of sweetness. Kingdom stewardship is our credited access to all round success in life. Kingdom stewardship. From scriptures, we discover so. In Psalm 34, in verse 10, the young lion do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. They that seek the Lord shall not lack or want any good thing. If you want good in your life, go after God. Without God, no matter how good anything you think you have, it will turn to zero. Very, very natural and spiritual. Any good a man thinks he has, that God's hand is not there, it can never last. True success Good success is a function of the hand of God. Every good minus God is what? Zero. I'm sure you're a very good mathematician. How do you spell good? G-O-O-D. How do you spell God? G-O-D. Minus God from good, what is remaining? One big zero inside. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first. First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. All these good things shall be added unto you. It is addiction to the kingdom that brings addition to life. Every good success that a man desires is in seeking after God. Kingdom stewardship. What are therefore the benefits 
of kingdom stewardship. Number one, serving God is a platform for supernatural breakthroughs. For supernatural breakthroughs. You desire supernatural breakthroughs in life. That is the key. Kingdom stewardship. Kingdom stewardship. Luke chapter 5 and verses 1 to 8 gives us the picture of the encounter of Simon Peter with Jesus. He was fishing all through the night. He was a man who desired success, breakthrough. He was doing what he knew how to do naturally. And there was no problem with that. He was professional about his fishing expenditure. And then he, he knew all the natural principles of fishing. There's nothing wrong in having natural knowledge. It's good. It can give you some measures of success, but not good success. This man has applied all the natural principles that he knew how to. He caught nothing. That is the limitation of natural principles. It is limited. Jesus came and spoke the word and then that opened him up to strange dimensions of breakthrough. Seeking God ushers you to supernatural breakthrough. Seeking God. Earlier on, Jesus has made use of his boat. Seeking God opens you up to supernatural breakthroughs. Because you don't serve God for nothing. God has not called us to seek him in vain. In Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 19, the scriptures authenticate that fact that God has not called us to seek him in vain. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seek of Jacob, seek him in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. God will always say what he means and means what he says. I have not asked you to seek me in vain. You can't be seeking me and be going down. No. You go up seeking God. In Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 23, he said, in all labor there is profit. Kingdom stewardship guarantees supernatural breakthrough and profits. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. When you seek after God genuinely, you don't suffer breakdowns. Instead, he transforms your breakdowns to breakthroughs. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, without faith it is impossible to please God. For they that must come to him must believe. Must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God is not only a recorder. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Every area of breakdown in your life, I declare by the spirit of God, this month you will share your breakthrough testimony. Kingdom stewardship guarantees breakthrough. One day the disciples of Jesus in Mark chapter 10 and verses 28 to 30 ask Jesus a very crucial question. Peter spoke to him and said Lord we have left all and we have followed you. What is our reward? We have left all. There is no one that truly left all that will not get all of his blessings. We have left all. If you claim to be serving God, what have you left? You have not left your comfort zone. No, you have not left your resources. Many people can be good in exerting their energy, but when it comes to their resources, it is a no-go area. An incident of a man was recalled. He was in church. And then they were singing that hymn, Take my life and let it be consecrated unto me. He sang it very well. Is it not my life? Take it. Take
take my moment and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. And then when it comes to verse 3, which is take my silver and my gold, <laughs> he said, take my mm, 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 mm. Take everything. But this one, you know I need to pay my house rent. I have not paid my student fees. I have converts, but you see, I, I, this money is meant for that. I can't be transporting them. You two understand God. What have you left? Peter said, we have left all and we have followed you. What is our gain? Tell us. And Jesus gave him the right answer. And because when Peter asked that question, that was that which was in the minds of all the disciples. They say we should leave. We have left everything. We left giving our time, giving our energy, giving our resources, our personality. We have left it somewhere. And we are out on outreach to places they shouldn't expect us to be. Tell us what is our benefit. We have engaged in all the operations. What is our benefit? And as soon as Peter asked that question, the disciples gave him a thump up. That is what we want to know. And Jesus said, everyone that have left all shall receive a hundredfold. Hundredfold. Now in this time, not only when you get to heaven. Houses, brethren, sisters, and everything they have left. And in this world to come eternal life. Now mark that scriptures. He said they will receive houses. They will receive, you know, all manners of good things. But there is a word there that many times when we read, we claim we didn't see it. Hundredfold now in this time, houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, land. And with persecutions, most of the times we dodge that area. If you truly want to serve God, you will be persecuted. People will mock you. They will ask you all manners of questions. Oh, sister Winner, all this your, your thing you are going around and you are not married. You better think about your life. Oh, brother, operation. All the operation you are doing, you don't have a job. And you are the only boy, in your, you are the only male child in your family. You better think about your life. They will persecute you. But until man mock you, God can't make you. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is always tension that brings breakthroughs. Tensions always precede breakthroughs. Whenever you get to a point and Satan want to make you begin to review your service, wants to discourage you and show you what God has not done, because your miracle is just at the corner. He wants you to miss it. Just one stone throw. Just one step. Maybe he's coming after this operation, Andrew Week. And Satan wants to stop you from engaging. And he tells you, all the one you have been going, what has come out of it? What has come? You to answer me, what has come? Anytime your breakthrough is in, in, in sight, Satan wants to stop you. Can't you see in football? Anytime a goal is about to be scored, there is tension. No goal. Everybody is playing very casually. Even the commentator is at ease. The players at ease. Coach is at ease. He takes the ball. He passes it. He dribbles three men. He comes back again. But when a goal is about to be scored, tension everywhere. He takes the ball. He moves. He moves. Oh, oh. Spectators are under tension. in your life now is because a breakthrough is about to happen for you. I decree by the prophetic word of God today, the next service you are coming to share your testimony here. If you believe it, shout the loudest amen. If you believe it, shout the loudest amen. As we continue therefore to engage in serving God, he continues to change our levels. In Luke chapter 19, verses 13 and 17 to 19, he gave them talents and then he told them to occupy till he comes. And then when he returned, 
they were given accounts. The one who made God was given 10 pounds, he made 10 more pounds. He expanded his horizon. He changed his level. The one that was given five pounds also made more. And then his level changed. Hallelujah. As we continue to serve God, he ensures consistent change of level. Consistent change of level. When Judah entered into a covenant to serve God, God turned their situation around and gave them all round rest. That's what serving God does. It gives you all round rest. God is interested in every area of your life, not just one area. He doesn't want you to prosper in your work and suffer in your family. He doesn't want you to prosper in your family and suffer in your health. No. All round success. He gave them all round rest. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verses 12 to 15, when they made the covenant to serve God with all their hearts and with all their soul, he gave them all round rests. Don't just serve God haphazardly. You want all round rest, give him all your heart. They made the covenant to serve God with all their heart. It is heart service that brings all round rest, not eye service. All their hearts, not haphazardly. You are one leg in, one leg out. One week, you are very hot. And the next two weeks, you go on recess. All round rest comes by giving all of your heart. In Proverbs 23 and verse 26, my son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. If your heart is genuinely serving God, you can't be distracted by anything. No. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13, he said, when they made up their mind, you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart, not some of your heart. The position you give God in your heart determines the position he will give you on the earth. You can't give God the last position in your heart. You only remember God after you have finished every other thing. You only remember God to go on outreach when you are very comfortable. You place God last in your heart. How do you expect him to place you first on the earth? Hallelujah. It is the position you place him in your heart that determines the position he places you on the earth. In this season of multiplication, plug your heart into it. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verses 19 to 21. Plug your heart to it. Go all out for God. You can't be part of the multiplication and not be part of the glorification. Hallelujah. In verse 19, he said, Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. You can't be part of the multiplication and not be part of the glorification. Your season of glory is just about to begin. All that it requires is to correctly position. This coming week is an opportunity for every one of us in our operation Andrew week. Do something for Jesus tangibly to register yourself for this glory that has already started with the church. Go all out to win souls. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't even know what to tell them. Get there. Bring them in. 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 I read the story of a great man of God, Smith Wigglesworth of blessed memory. At the early time of his ministry, he wasn't a preacher. He was a plumber. And then he went to a crusade one day. And then the speaker was not around before then. What he was doing with his small, small earning in the plumbing work, he would gather and go and bring people to crusades. And he was doing that until one day came. Grand crusades. And then the speaker was nowhere to be found. And then he has brought a lot of people. Blind, lame, and all that. And then he started passionately praying, Oh God, let this speaker come. These people can't go back the same. God saw his passionate heart. That was where God gave him a calling. There 
there is something you can do. Get there, bring them. Bring them and transport them to church. Send, you know, aggressive text messages consistently to tell somebody something must happen this coming Sunday for him or her. Do something for Jesus. And then you see the doors opening for you in the name of Jesus. What are the benefits of kingdom stewardship? Number two, it is a platform for experiencing supernatural favor. It is a platform for experiencing supernatural favor. Psalm 102, verses 13 to 15. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. And what must he do to take that favor? For thy servant take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So the hidden shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. Hallelujah. The time to favor her is come. But what is required? Favor the things of the kingdom. Let your heart passionately go after the things of the kingdom. Kingdom expansion. Anything you desire from God, ask yourself, what is the reason for seeking after that thing? If the foundation is for the expansion of God's kingdom, God must favor you. <laughs> we had the testimony of that our beloved sister. She was in church. She had interview. She was in church in the sanctuary sweeping for Jesus. She was engrossed in serving God. And somehow, the time for the interview went off. But she believed God. And then she went back. Of all the people that was interviewed, she was the one who didn't come was the one that was selected. What do you call that? Favor. Favor. Anything that you desire in life, if the foundation is for the expansion of God's kingdom, there is no way God will not favor you. Even where you are not qualified, whatever disqualifies you will end up qualifying you. You want a job, a change of job. Is it just for the money you want to get out of it? Oh, they are paying better. Is it just for the increase in pay so that you can live a luxurious life? Or so that you can have opportunity to invest in bringing souls to Jesus? A man shared a testimony in church one day. He said, during the wonder double, he said, because what he normally does is that he goes, you know, pick people from a particular place that he has evangelized, bring them and go back again and bring them. And uh, he was going many times before he comes back, the service is over. So he told God, Lord, if you can, if, if you can bless me with a car, it will make it easy. And then God gave him a car. And then he started going, running as many times as he could before the service is over. And he told God, Lord, if you can give me a bus, it will be much easier. God gave him a bus and gave him jeep to wedge it by the side. If whatsoever you need is tied to God's kingdom, there is no way favor will not open unto you. Hallelujah. See the story of the children of Israel. In Exodus chapter 4, verses 22 to 23, their major purpose for leaving Egypt was to serve God. And God said, Thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thou seest the Lord Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my people go, that he may serve me. If thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay your son, even thy firstborn. If the promotion you are looking for in your place of work is to attain to a position where you can have influence to win more souls for Jesus, he will give you. But if the promotion is because you want to oppose, because one brother in your unit has challenged you one day and you felt he spoke to you because of the position he has in his place of work and then you have told God, Lord, give me the position and I will show them. Who will you show? You may not get it. 
But if the reason is tied to the kingdom, even if you are not qualified for that position, God will favor you and give it to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Exodus 21, we saw how God gave them favor. Exodus 12, 36, they, they took everything that the Egyptians, the Egyptians brought gold and everything to them because the Lord gave them favor in the sight of the Egyptians. He gave them favor. There are two major ways God can favor a man. Either by increasing your income or by decreasing your expenditure. Oh God, I need a car to make my outreach more productive. It is either God gives you money to buy that car or God brings the car through anybody and give you. Praise the name of the Lord. Favor. See how they enjoy soundness of health all through their journey. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 3 to 4. All through they enjoyed 40 years. There was no sickness. They didn't suffer hunger. He fed them with manna, which thou knowest not. Neither did their fathers know that he might make thee known that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the, the law does man live. Thy raiment was not old upon thee. Neither did their food swear these 40 years. That can only be God's favor. Only God's favor. If they were to purchase all the food they ate for 40 years, you know how much it will cost. Where would they get the money? Praise the name of the Lord. In the first service, God's servant was exhorting us the blessings of God upon his life. And I heard him say that somebody brought... 90 bags of rice. I say, oh God, quicken us. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. If these people were to pay for the food that they were eating for 40 years, where would they get the money? It is only the favor of God. Many a times, the whole month passes by. Look at your salary. Look at all the things God has done for you. You will know that it is only the favor of God over your life. And yet, many, some keep saying, oh, I go for outreach, I do this, I do that. I have not seen anything happen. You have not seen anything happen? All through the month, you didn't beg, you didn't borrow? Look at your salary, look at what it is as compared to what happened all through this year. Oh, God has not done anything. Go to the hospital. All through the month, you are not sick. No matter how much you earn, the, one sickness can clear the salary of one year. And yet, God keeps you healthy. If I were you, I would shout a louder. Thank you, Jesus. They enjoy supernatural abundance all through the way. In Psalm 105 and verse 38, supernatural abundance. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. There was not one feeble person among their tribe. He brought them with silver and gold. They had no any other luggage but gold. Maybe they were counting clothes before, but the Egyptian kept bringing gold. There was no space for cloth. They removed the cloth and replaced it by gold. The blessings of God. The blessings of God. The blessings of God. Never you think that the beauty around your life is a function of how well you can walk, how hard you can walk. No! It is the favor of God. Except the Lord builds they that labor. They labor in vain. Psalm 127 and verse 1. Except the Lord watches over the city, they watch men. They only stay awake in vain except the Lord. No matter how much you work hard, without God's favor, you end up in frustration. It is God's favor that flavors your labor. The favor of God. The favor of God. Therefore, as you give yourself to kingdom stewardship, I see for you this month the kind of favor you have never enjoyed in your life. If you are the one I'm talking about, you will shout the loudest, amen. As we have commonly said, therefore, nothing flies by favor. Joseph was a vivid example. He had no any personality, but he was a committed servant of the Most High God. And then he stepped into the house or Potiphar, everything was handed over to him except his wife. 
That's what favor can do. Can do. Favor and thrones. What qualification has Joseph? Nothing. Much more than he was a committed servant of God. Hallelujah. Above all of, all of the above happened. Why? Only because these people decided to serve the Lord their God. They decided to serve the Lord. If your choice is to serve God, then he will turn all the pressures of your life to pleasures. In Job chapter 36 and verse 11, if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. That's what service, kingdom stewardship does. It turns all your pleasure, pleasures in life to pleasures. Hallelujah. Whatever area of life that the enemy is heating up your destiny. Today, I decree a turnaround for you in the name of Jesus. Two major outstanding biblical success stories from God's world. David was number one. He was a most celebrated king of Israel. Why? Because he was a servant. Addicted to kingdom service. Psalm 89 verses 20 to 24. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My servant. My servant. My servant. In whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exert upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his force before his face and plague them that hate him. Hallelujah. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his home be exalted. Why? Because he was committed to serving the interests of the kingdom. And all this blessing, God said, I will bless him. I will protect the blessed, the blessings upon his life. And I will, I, I will exact judgment against anyone that wants to touch him. All because he was a faithful servant. Hallelujah. Nehemiah is another example. A man of unusual passion. He had unusual passion for the well-being of God's people and God's house. The wall of Jerusalem was broken down. Passion gripped his heart. See the kind of passion that he used in praying in Nehemiah chapter 1 and verses 1 to 11. He was praying with the entirety of his heart. Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. And then he sought and requested of the king to allow him to go and build that broken down wall. And the king granted him the request and favored him. Vehicle was provided for him to get there and then the materials to build it was supplied. When your heart is passionately running after kingdom expansion, God will always open doors of favor. If it is in your heart, God will place it in your hand. Hallelujah. And then favor open unto him. Unusual passion. What is your passion for kingdom matters? Where is your first love? You that was very, very aggressive when it comes to outreach. What has suddenly happened to you? Suddenly. Since this year started, you have not even attended once. You that was addicted to follow up. What has suddenly happened to you? That your love has suddenly was cold. And the people you are following before your new convert, they are the one following you now. And they call you. Hello, bros. I'm just checking on you. You never called me all this while. That's the people you were following up. They are now the one following you up. You receive a new fire from this altar. In the name of Jesus, your zeal for God will start burning in another realm. In the name of Jesus, if you believe it, shout the loudest, amen. If your passion is for kingdom expansion, there is no way you will not enjoy outstanding favor and breakthrough and outstanding success. Everyone that have mocked you before, by the success God is bringing your way this month, they are coming to congratulate you in the name of Jesus. God will shut the mouth of your mockers in the name of Jesus. Those who think nothing good can happen for you, they will open their mouth in amazement for you this month. All your family members that have rejected you before, 
because they saw nothing around your life. They are coming to look for you in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout the loudest, amen. Today is our covenant day of breaking invincible barriers. I'd like you to know, God's people, that invincible barriers are real. They are real. They are there. Somebody say, why invisible barrier? What is invisible barrier? They are oppositions. They are obstacles. Just targeted to stop you on your pathway to your destiny. Why are they there? They shouldn't be. It shouldn't be surprising to you. Because you are a child of destiny. You have great destiny. Satan is not interested in non-entities. Satan is not interested in those who are on the ground who cannot rise again. Satan is not interested in failure, but he's interested in destiny children. People who have great destiny, who are stars. When Moses was born, there was stardom inside of him. And Pharaoh started looking for Hebrew male child. And who, who was he looking for? Moses. Because he sensed that stardom in him. When Jesus was born, Pharaoh ordered that they should kill him. A star has just been born. No, 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 no. We must silence him. So if you are experiencing opposition, an obstacle in any area of life is because you are an established star. A great and effectual door is open unto me, but there are many adversaries. First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. When there is a great door that is targeted for you, Satan will always want to fight. He will want to fight. He will want to fight. So when you see barriers, when you see opposition, don't start wondering, don't start crying, oh God, why me? Why me? No, opposition establishes your strong position. Praise the name of the Lord. When we talk about opposition, what is opposition? Opposition is meant to take your position up. Opposition, up position. So that barrier that is standing before you now, it will end up catapulting you up in the name of Jesus. There will always be satanic resistance. That's why you see some people, barriers, satanic barriers. To get married is a problem. Nothing is wrong with you. Very good looking sister, zealously serving God. But no man is coming to you to say, I want to marry you. And to some, people come to propose. When it is time to get set for marriage, they don't disappear. Invincible barriers. You can't understand why. To some, very intelligent. You may even be a first class student in school. Good certificate. But to get a job is a problem. You have gone to all manners of interviews. They promise you, but they never call you. Barriers. Some people in business or in career, they come very close to their testimony of breakthrough. Just at the last minute, it slips away. Near success syndrome. Satanic, invincible barriers. Barriers of the enemy. Oh, some student, intelligent student, but they can't just pass. They can't just pass. They are read and read and read and they get to the exam or they can't just pass. Not because they are not intelligent. Immediately after the exam, they remember all what they should write. Invincible barriers. Have you wondered why you have been writing that professional exam? For more than six years now, all the people you taught, they passed. But you can't just pass because your next position is waiting. And Satan has found that you will not cross there. But I speak to you by the Spirit of God. As prophetic declaration by God's servant will come upon you today. That barrier shall be broken in the name of Jesus. That barrier shall be broken in the name of Jesus. Some people, they take in. And every time they take in at a particular month, they lose the pregnancy. And they go. Doctors say nothing. 
but they can't just break through. They can't just break through. They come near, they can't break, they break through. Four, five, six miscarriages. Barriers are there who has vowed that you won't cross. But the good news is that whatever brought you to this service today, it will push you into your testimony in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 13 and verses 24 to 28. He said, the enemy have done this. It's not normal. There are invisible forces. You can't see them, but they are there. When men slept, the enemy came and so tight. And so they struggle and struggle. The door that everybody passes through without sweat, the door is just open. Everybody going through, going through. They are having it easy. The moment it gets to your turn, struggle. You struggle for every good thing. That's not normal. Today, that is coming to an end in the name of Jesus. How do I break these invincible barriers? Number one, you must be born again and remain so. That's the foundation. Until you are born again, that barrier cannot be broken. You need help. The forces that are fighting, they are more than your natural strength. You need supernatural help. Let God hold your hand. So don't waste time when it is time to give your life to Jesus. If you are not tired of that struggle, if you don't want to go and if you are tired of that struggle, you don't want to go through life that way again, you run, you run, you run. Because today is your appointed day of salvation. Hallelujah. John chapter 3 and verse 5. When you are born again, your position changes. You are now lifted above all those forces. In Ephesians chapter 2 verses 5 to 6. Now you are born again. Keep walking in the light of his word. Keep walking in the light of his word. First Thessalonians 5 5. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. John chapter 1 and verse 5. Keep walking in the light. You need light to shatter every form of darkness and keep them away from your life. Light is what keeps darkness away, not your phonetics. Not your degree certificate. It is light. So get committed to God's word. Reading God's word. Listening to God's word. Meditating on God's word. That light inside of you keeps every form of darkness away from you. Number three, keep walking by faith. Because you are fighting with invincible forces that you can't see. You need faith to remain victorious. We walk not by sight but by faith. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. Ephesians 6 and verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, where when thou will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. You walk by faith. You walk by faith. After that words of prophecy have come upon you today, just believe that that barrier is broken. Believe, believe, believe. Carry that mentality that you are free. Most people's problem is their mentality and it's your mentality that defines your identity the story of a fish was told put inside an aquarium and because it was a fingerling a small fish the owner of the aquarium divided the aquarium into two with a sliding glass and that small fish when it comes it swims within that confined area and when it gets to that barrier it hits its head on that barrier and swims back he comes again and swim and hits his head on that barrier and swings back and that has been his routine it was growing it was growing and when it grew to a point that that space was small the owner of the aquarium removed that demarcation so that the fish will have all the space now to grow well but you know what happened the fish will still swim, swim and when it gets to that place it will do like this and go back and when it gets to that place it will do like this and go back and it was doing so the owner watched carefully and then when he saw the fish, he pushed the fish to the other side. And the fish knew that he was free. What am I trying to say? Many people, you know, captivity is in the mind. Even when they are free, they can't see it. Even when there is no more obstacle, they still assume there is obstacle. So today, when these obstacles are broken, walk in that liberty of spirit and by faith. 
you will never, never come under the captivity of the enemy anymore. Number four, keep serving God and the interests of his kingdom. Second Chronicles 15, 12 to 15, keep serving God and the interests of his kingdom. Don't let your passion for kingdom reduce. Increase it. Increase it. If you want to get what you have never gotten before, do what you have never done before. Hallelujah. Put God to a test. Do what you have never done before. And then you will see more breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. And number five, keep speaking boldly against all forms of barrier on your path. Your mouth is your destiny. Close mouth is close destiny. To live well, you must speak well. You must speak well. I've given you a mouth and a wisdom which the adversary will not be able to resist nor gain say. Luke 21 and verse 15. Life and death, they are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 20, 21. The power to live a life of breakthrough is in your mouth. Don't speak death. Don't speak, you know, captivity. Speak liberty. Speak victoriously. Speak triumphantly. And you will have what you say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, open your mouth wide. And I shall feel it. And number six, engage a lifestyle of praise to ensure God's presence. Engage a lifestyle of praise. Praise provokes God's presence. And if God be for you, which barrier can stop you? Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. Psalm 22 and verse 3. Praise draws God's presence. Praise brings God's presence to where you are. For thou holy, who inhabited the praises of his people. And God, for you, the barriers must clear. In Psalm 114, the, the barriers gave way because God was leading them. Hallelujah. And lastly, keep following his leading. God never leads downwards. He leads upwards. He leads to the topmost top of life. Let him lead you. Don't be led by your intelligence. Don't be led by your certificates. Don't be led by situations and circumstances. No. Let him lead you. Even in the midst of impossibilities. If it is God leading you, he places you over the enemy. May the Lord give you understanding. In the name of Jesus. Every barrier against your destiny. Today, they shall be shattered in the name of Jesus. Whatever obstacle that you have been struggling with, finally, it shall give way today in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Quickly, before we partake of the communion, first and first, you are here, you are not born again, you have not accepted Jesus as your pastor, Lord and Savior. Please give me this opportunity to hand you over to Jesus, the one who knows the way. The one who can never be defeated. The almighty God who subdues every mighty problem that may be harassing your destiny. I know you have been coming to church, but today is a very serious business. That barrier cannot give way except by a higher force. It is spirit against spirit. It is power against power. You have gone to many places and yet the same, but not with Jesus. Hallelujah. If you can say yes today, the barriers will give way. And then your destiny, your glorious destiny, will begin to find expression. Wherever you are, therefore, you want to say yes to Jesus. I know somebody's already there. Something is telling you today is your day of liberty. Wherever you are, you want to give your life to Jesus. I'd like you to rise up on your feet wherever you are. Quickly, rise up on your feet. Let me pray this very, very short prayer with you. And then your life will never remain the same. Rise up. Forget about who is looking at you. Take your Bible, your bag, wherever you are. Begin to come to Jesus. Begin to run to Jesus. Some other people are here. You gave your life to Jesus. But suddenly, the challenges took you away. And since then, you have been struggle, struggling. It is as if you have been put inside a hole and pit. Today, God wants to bring you out of that pit. Wherever you are, you want to return back to Jesus. Rise up. Join them. Rise up. Keep coming. Church, keep clapping for them. Keep coming. Keep coming. Wherever you are, keep coming. If I were you, I will, I will walk faster. If I were you, I will walk faster. God bless you. Come quickly. Come quickly. Jesus is about to set you free. Your destiny is taking another new turn. Some people are in this congregation. 
You can't answer that question. Are you born again? You need to think and think and think. No, you are not. You need to rush to Jesus right now. You need to rush to this Jesus right now. Do you know the forces fighting against your life? Do you know where they have taken your name to? To some people, they have put down and pegged your destiny down. It's only Jesus that can break that chain. Why don't you run to him? Run, run to him wherever you are. God bless you. Church, keep clapping for them. They are coming. They are coming from everywhere. Come. There are still some people sitting now. As I'm speaking, something is telling you. You are the one that pastor is talking about. You are the one. You are the one. You want to stand up. Something is pulling you down. That's the devil. Walk out on the devil. Walk out on the devil. Walk out on the devil. If you clap for them, church, they will run. They will run. Wherever you are, Jesus is waiting. Jesus is waiting. Wherever you are, you came in a group of your friends. And some, one of them is telling you, let's go, let's go. Another person is saying, we will do it another time. That's the devil wants to postpone your testimony. Stand up and start coming. Stand up. Start coming. Start coming. Start coming. Start coming. Start coming. God bless you. God bless you. Start coming. Jesus is waiting for you now. Quickly, quickly. Don't do it tomorrow. Don't do it tomorrow. God bless you. If you are joining us, join us quickly before we pray. All these wonderful people in front, congratulations for this decision you have taken. Can I ask you to bow your head? Put your right hand on your chest and pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I realize I'm a sinner, but you died for me. You shed your blood on the cross of Calvary for me for the forgiveness of my sin. Jesus, I believe you in my heart. I receive you in my heart. And I confess you with my mouth now. Be my Lord and my Savior. From today, I will serve you. Never to go back anymore. I receive grace to stay with you. Now because I believe and confess, I am born again. Never to go back again. In Jesus' mighty name. Now let me pray with you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for these precious souls that you have drawn into your kingdom. I ask that your hands will preserve them. None of them will draw back. I put a seal of God over you right now. Satan, take off your hands from their life. Grace to serve the living God. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, shout amen. Congratulations, we rejoice with you. Please go to the direction of your kingdom friend. Some of you go to the left and right as you are directed. Quickly, just follow the direction of your kingdom friends. Quickly, church, help me clap for them. Clap for them. Clap for them. Church, rise up on your feet. Are you ready for that yoke to be destroyed? Are you ready for that barrier to be destroyed? Put your hands together as we welcome God's servant to bless us. For these multitudes of souls saved this morning, give God a big hand. Oh, I thought you are shouting as well, somebody here this morning. Amen. Somebody say with me, I have power to break every invisible barrier. In the name of Jesus, I cannot be stopped. I cannot be hindered by the authority in the name of Jesus. Now, use that name to tear down every barrier on your way right now. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Yes, thank you and thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Please get seated. No doubt you have been blessed. Like me, if you are blessed, say, I am blessed. Say it with a smile of dominion on your face. You shall remain so. For the beautiful word of the Lord we have received this morning, I know that someone's life will never be the same again. Amen. There is something about consciousness that every believer has to imbibe. The consciousness of who you are and what you carry. 
Consciousness enhances confidence. Fear is born out of ignorance. Confidence is born out of consciousness of who you are and of what you carry. There is truly the world of the invisible and you belong to the superior aspect of that world. You belong to the superior aspect of that world. Interestingly, Satan knows you more than you know yourself. He knows your capacity. What does he use against you? Ignorance. 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 Your ignorance is Satan's advantage. He uses ignorance largely against the believer. He knows your capacity. He knows what you can do. But it will make you not to know what you can do. Therefore, get to know yourself in Christ. Get to know the provision in Christ. Your consciousness will be built via massive knowledge. And it will enhance your confidence. Say loud, amen. Amen. In addition to the powerful word we have heard, therefore, keep building your knowledge. Who am I? What do I have? If God be for me, no one can be against me. Say loud, amen. amen. What more? Please learn to pray intensely in the language of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Just like you don't know the operation of the invisible world negatively, you don't know the strength of your pain in the Holy Ghost. Now, Satan doesn't know what you are saying, just like you don't know the enchantment of a charm maker. Stangi Kotosh Kreda. Especially when you sense some strange forces around you. When you wake up, you're having a nightmare. Stand up. Shake your room. Shake every devil hanging around you. Nana is a geda. Tandi shagla kata. Tamarine galo sikibon. Dabania shagarba. Accident last week. Accident this week. Accident about to occur. Manio Shukuraman Dektanasa. Tenyan Juku. Takling Glock of Osikilia. Magadao. Shikle Deva. So, through invisible force to meet up with invisible force. Spirit to spirit. Power to power. What more? Keep using the name of Jesus. Because every name shall bow to that name. Psalm 118. Verse 10, he said, Though the forces of darkness rise up against me, all nations compass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. Verse 11, they compass me about, yea, they compass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. Verse 12, in the name of the Lord, they compass me about like beasts. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, who will I destroy them? <laughs> Look, the name of Jesus is a master destroyer. Don't joke with it. So you have these weapons that you don't have to go to look for. You don't have to look for it is written because uh, some things may occur that may make it too late. But you know praying in tongues is inside your tongue. Calling the name of Jesus is at your tongue. So you bring out the weapons. And of course you bring the blood of Jesus. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. So you have these forces. Say with me, I have the name of Jesus. I have the blood of Jesus. I have the language of the Holy Ghost. To destroy invisible barriers. 
So every day, pray in the Holy Ghost. He can glad tana shagdaga. He can read the gele gele baraba. Pray, especially if you are not owning your house rent. Amen. <laughs> Very shortly, you will stop renting. So you you can pray extensively. If your neighbor is angry, ask him. How much is your house? I want to buy it. You buy the house so you can annex the constituents of your prayer. It is well with you. Amen. Give Jesus a big hand. Amen. This morning, I want to specially commend every one member of this assembly. I'm overwhelmed with your zeal, your commitment. Despite fuel shortage everywhere, despite hike in price of fuel, you still come to church by all means. Many of us come from far places, from FCT and beyond. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Not minding the traffic, vehicle breakdown on the way or not, not minding. People, vehicle blocking the road for fuel queue, you are not bothered. You keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. Watch it. This week, amazing wonders will keep happening and keep happening. I pray for you from the depth of my heart as a privileged shepherd over this assembly. I am saying to you, God is impressed. He will surprise you. You have kept looking for God. Good things will look for you. This week in particular, God of this commission will surprise you. From the depth of my heart, this early morning, my God, to surprise you. Yeah. The way he has been blessing Oedipo for following him, the same God will appear to you this week and bless you. You will not suffer again. You will not beg again. You will not be hungry again. Give God a big hand. Worthy of our praise. You have kept winning souls. You have kept bringing people to church. Some of you are using your last dime to make telephone calls to see the establishment of new converts. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Your testimony will be beyond measure this week in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this is special soul winning week we are stepping into, Operation Andrew Week. Make sure you don't miss out, you are not left out. Start inviting people from now for next Sunday service. It will be special anointing service. And what more? Covenant day of marital breakthrough. Amen. You are standing in the gap, either for yourself or for your relations. Please pick handbills and make sure you invite somebody. Especially those of you who are in need. You see, when you give out what you need, God ensures that your needs are met. When you give out what you need, God ensures that your needs are met. A lady who was looking for marital breakthrough invited somebody else who was not married. And the person she invited asked her, what about your own? Is it done? And she said, tomorrow it should be done. Both of them were in church on Sunday. The first one was done in the evening. The second one was done on Monday. Both of them happily married. God will visit you right now. Pick your handbills up. I pray that everyone you invite will say yes to you. No one will say no to your invitation. These ambils are anointed. Everyone holding this ambil from the genuineness of your heart, I decree that this ambil will go from you and not return to you empty. Give a God, give the Lord a big shout, everybody. Amen. Now, We'll be having water baptism immediately after the service. We've had testimonies. Some fellows who are drug addicts, they were baptized and their addiction disappeared. Family problem dissolved. So immediately after the service, please go for your water baptism. If you don't have change of cloth, they will provide for you. 
a change of clothes. Don't miss it. You can see out there the photo of those who have been baptized. They will give you white dress so white life can become your portion. It is well with you. On Saturday, we'll be having um, soul winning district outreach. Please ensure you are there. If you have not attended Bible school, it's starting tomorrow, two solid weeks, five days each week. Please pick your form. They will give you the form right now. You'll take it to the center tomorrow. You have not attended, take the form in Masaka, Maraba, New Karu, Asokoro, and Goshen here. Attend any of the centers. Invite your uh, new converts to join you. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Please note all officials of WSF from um, region all the way to the district and their secretaries are expected to have special meeting after the third service. Very special meeting. You need to be there and be blessed. Please rise to your feet. This is your day. I say this is your day. This is your day. Don't forget, transportation provision is available every service, Sunday service, midweek service, to and fro. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Raise your hand and give thanks to God with authority, with confidence in your heart. With confidence in your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, every first time worshiper, this is your day. Everyone worshiping in this church this morning, God will give you first class blessing. Wherever you are seated, please, or wherever you are standing, will you come to the altar here? All first time worshipers, come with everything you come to church with your bag, your Bible, including children, for pastoral blessing. I want to bless you on the behalf of the congregation this morning. All first time worshipers, start coming to the altar. Start coming to the altar. Please make room for them. All first time worshipers, come. Don't leave anything you come to church with behind. Everyone in the assembly, I'd like you to lift up your voice. And begin to tear down every barrier on your way. Jesus has given you the authority. As soon as they hear your voice, they will bow. Somebody speak out. Speak out right now. You have the authority. Speak with confidence right now. Don't close your mouth. Raise your voice and speak out. I have power. I have authority to cast out devils. To stop everybody on my way. Our first time worshippers. Begin to declare the blessing of God upon your life. Declare that every barrier on your way be broken. Barrier of sickness, disease, failure, oppositions, hindrances, failure in school or for your children. Barrier to your fruitfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Barrier to successful completion of your project. Barrier to having your own house. Barriers to your spiritual life begin to tear them down. Tear them down. Tear them down. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus. Wonderful name we are praying. By the blood of Jesus in this communion, I see you out of every captivity. I see you out of every captivity. I see you out of every pit where the devil has put you. The blood of Jesus make a way for you right now. As you take this communion, sicknesses and diseases disappear. All barriers on your way are broken in the name of Jesus. Your weeping over your children is over today. You will live and not die in the name of Jesus. Let everyone that will return with Clear testimony, shout the loudest, Amen. Get seated, everyone in the assembly, as the communion will be served right now. Meanwhile, all of you, our friends, brothers and sisters at the altar, we are so delighted to see you. God brought you here to bless you. And this morning, I declare you blessed. When I bless, God confirms it. I declare you blessed this morning. I cancel every negative finger of the devil from your life this morning. Amen. You have come to the altar of God. Your life will be altered favorably today. Amen. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. And you are welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Please bow your heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray over these precious brothers and sisters. I decree that it shall be well with them from today. Amen. You will see no more shame, no more failure. No more hardship in your life. In Jesus' wonderful name. 
you will live here to share your testimonies in Jesus name please open your eyes the communion will be served to your right here and to your left as you do please follow our church officials who will attend to you out there we love you you are welcome waiting to hear your testimony join us again at the midweek service on Wednesday and next Sunday we'll be delighted to have you here God bless you please start going take your communion start going just take one and in case you have children you take for your children and God bless you choir sing your song life quick and we move. everybody wait for the um, prophetic blessing before you go let's go right now Declare with me again in the name of Jesus. I break down. Everybody here. On my way. To fulfillment of destiny. I break down everybody here. To my next level. Of more than a conqueror. I break down everybody here. Against my spiritual life. My financial life my social life my business and career my marital destiny my fruitfulness i break down the barriers raise your voice pray in the holy ghost right now pray in the holy ghost pray in the holy ghost pray in the holy ghost pray intensely in the holy ghost I shall not die but live to declare the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we are praying. Lift up your hands, people of God. I declare <laughs> that just like no barrier has been able to stop this commission, nor stop his servant to Edebo, no barrier shall be able to stop you and your family again. Those who say you will not make it, we end underneath your feet. Those who say you will not move forward, we permanently remain at your back. There may be many who gather against you. In the name of Jesus, I tear them into pieces right now. So shall it be. 
Jesus wonderful name Amen. please get the books of the month get the teachings as well in CDs and be blessed don't forget to also be at the winner satellite fellowship on Saturday 5 p.m. and be blessed finally before we go will you please as you have always done both rejoice with my family on the behalf of myself two days ago was my birthday all of you who have prayed for us rejoicing with us as you keep praying the Lord will keep blessing you now I want to bless you with the blessings I've received from my fathers my fathers prayed for me every blessing they have poured on me I share them with you right now many say oh you you don't look that age you look young from today the kind of refreshing God has given to me I declare your access into it now give me five services to preach on Sunday I'm just on top just on top you will not know the meaning of weariness again you will not know the meaning of tiredness again you will not know the meaning of weakness again the strength of the Lord. Bring your hand to your body. Bless yourself with the goodness of the Lord. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm more than conqueror. Congratulations. Amen and amen. For those of you who are attending the second class, of believers foundation class please make sure you are there at the basement if you are yet to be baptized by immersion please quickly go to the baptistry right now as they attend to you thank you lord greet your neighbors as you go please god bless you